This is part six of our array series, and we're going to look at how do we get data from a text file and load it into an array. So let's have a look at that. So we're going to start off by taking an array. Let's call it array names. It goes from one to a hundred of type string. So we're going to load in some strings into this array. And uh, we're going to have a size variable, which can determine how many values are in the array. So irrespective of whether you're going to fill it to 100, you're going to need the size variable to know at what point are we filling the array. Have we filled in three values so far or four or five? So that's going to keep track of where to put in the next value. So let's have a look. So we have an array. It's, it's empty. It's got no values in it. And we are going to set our default size. We must always initialize size to zero. So assume that if your array is empty, you set your size to zero because obviously there's nothing in the array. So there's nothing in the array, so we set it to zero. And we're going to go look at our text file. This is the picture of our text file. We're going to go get fetch that, that name, Jim, first. Now, if you know your text file algorithm, going through a text file, if you're not too sure about your text file algorithm, go look at our text file video. But we're going to extract that first name there, Jim. And you'd normally use a read line to extract. So at this particular point, S line, our variable S line, will contain the value Jim. And now here is the key. Before we can insert that Jim into the array, you must always do this step first. This is the first step. Always remember it. You must increase your R size. You must say, hey, although we've got nothing in there, we first want to put a new value in, which means increase our size. Where do we want to increase it? We want to increase it to a 1, which means that is the position of where this gym must go. So we always increase our size first. A lot of people think to do it at the end. No, you increase it first. So what we are going to do then is at the position of this R size, at this position 1, we're going to put the value in S line, which was gym. So we're going to put gym into position 1. And then the loop for our array, or not for our array, for our text file, it'll go to the next value in the text file. So we're going to go to the next value, which is Sarah. And that's going to use a read line. So the value in S line will be the word Sarah. So we want to input, put this value into our array. So what do we do first? Yes, we increase our size first. It now becomes a 2. So that now we want to put Sarah at position 2 in the array, which means array names at our size at that position 2. You're going to put the value that's in S line, which is the value in our text file that we've just read, S line, which is Sarah. So Sarah will now go into position 2. And our loop will continue through the text file. We're not at the end of the text file, so we're going to go to the next value. Diana, what do we want to do? We're going to put it into the text file. We're going to read it into S line, but first we're going to increase our size. That's the first thing we're going to do, increase our size. And then we're going to put the value at position our size. We're going to put the value that is in S line, which so Diana is going to go into position 3. So the key to reading from a text file into an array is that you must increase your size variable first, and then you put it, the value that you want to put into the array, you put it at position our size or whatever the size variable is that you've just increased. So let's go apply this to a Delphi example. So here we have an example. We've got a Delphi program. We've got load from text file. We've got some local variables here. And I've got n, which is going to be the number of elements in the array. So I've got my text file algorithm here. So those of you who don't know, go look about text files. So we check if it exists. We assign the file. We reset it. We go from while we're not at the end of the file, keep reading in each line. So this code over here will be what will happen with each individual line. And S line will be each individual line of the text file. Okay. And then we are going to, at the end of our text file algorithm, we're just going to display all the values in array one. So we want to put this into array one. And N is going to be the number of values. So the first thing we must do, we must remember before we even get to our loop, we must initialize our number of elements in the array, it's a zero. There's no elements in my array one, none whatsoever. And so what I'm going to do now is at this particular point, S line will have a value. So what was the first step you said I must do? First, increase the value, the number of elements in the array, which is our N variable. First, increase N. So N was a zero. The first time we do this, it'll now become a one. And what do we want to do with that one? Well, in array one, at position n, at that one, 
we want to put whatever is in S line. Take whatever's in this line and put it into position one. And then we'll go, the loop will come back here. Are we at the end of the text file? No. Go read the second line. Increase N. So N will now be a two. At position two, put in S line. Go get the third line. Increase it to a three. At position three, just put in S line. So, so it's going to keep doing that. So that's the key. First initialize N to zero. And then first increase N inside your loop. And then put S line into position n of your array which will be one two three so this n variable is basically keeping track of how many elements you've put into the array so if you've put in three you want to put increase it to four to put the next one at position four so let's run it and see what it does so let's load the text file array there we go so we've got a whole bunch of values you see what the text file looks like it's got jim comma 68 now, let's say we were dealing with parallel arrays. So we want Jim to go into one array and the numbers to go into another array. Well, luckily we've got two arrays declared. We've got array one of top string and array two of top integer. That's not too difficult. We will get S line and S line will be, for example, S line will look something like this. It'll be uh, Jim comma 68. So that's what each value in S line will be a name comma followed by a value. So all we're going to do is we're going to say, first of all, we're going to increase n. And then into array 1, we want to put the name. So that means we're going to copy from S line, starting at 1. So we're going to start at position 1. And we want to go until the position of the comma back off a little bit. So we want to find the position of the comma because we don't know where the comma will be with each value because the names will be different lengths. So find the position of S line, well not S line, find the position of the comma in S line, which is a four, but if we want to copy four, we're going to copy one before four. So just back it up a little, minus one. So into position one, so increase N to a one in position one, go copy that name and put it into array one. And then before we move on in array two at that exact same position because we want it to be a parallel so if we we put it in position one then in position one of array two we want to put the mark how do i get the mark well we're going to copy from s line and we're going to start from the position of the comma plus one just one after the comma so we find the position of the comma in s line so we don't want to start there. We don't want to start there. We're going to start one after the comma. So that's why we're going to start plus one. So copy from S line. We're going to start from the position of the comma plus one. How many characters? Well, it's a market of 100. So the max will probably be three digits. So we can make it three. It can be four just to be in case. So first bit, copy from one to the position of the comma. Sorry, one to the position of the comma back off a bit. And then the second one will be you start at the position of the comma afterwards and then copy for three or whatever characters. Only thing is this is going to return a string and this array is an array of integers. So just remember, because we deal with numbers here, we're going to convert this copy from a string to an int. So after the copying is done, just convert it, put it into array. So we increase n to a one in position one of array one, we put the name in position one of array two, we put the mark. And then we go to the next line and so on and so on and so on. And in this case, we're going to display all of them. So I'm going to say plus another hash nine plus display array two at position R. Hey, but this is an integer, so integer array. So let's convert it from an integer back to a string when we display it. Do. So that's just the display. So let's have a look and see how that runs. So now we load the text file, and there you can see a name, the gym was put into array one, and array two would have had the values for the marks. Should have probably put a nice little heading here. That's a hash nine plus the word R2. There's my part word R. R2. So display it, boom. So there's a value in R1, 
and the values in R too. So there we go. That's how you can load from a text file into parallel arrays. For more videos from this video series, as well as other videos on Delphi and Archie related content, please go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, give us a like. We'd love to hear from you and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.